development goals and what our generation is doing to make sure that we are attaining them. So we've gone through quite a number of them. Um, zero hunger, reducing, uh, reducing poverty, that is. Um, we've done gender as well. I want to jump into one more, but before we do that, Jerry, you are nodding. When Les Salon was saying the issue of um, let's empower Meaning. women and girls, and that as a man doesn't make you any less of a man. Would you like to add to that? Because I saw you nodding in agreement. You're saying yes. <laughs> Yes, and this is because it's a discussion I was having with a few, a few male friends actually earlier, and it's something that is termed fragile masculinity, where you believe, you feel like your ego is bruised just because someone else is doing something better than you or just because you feel a bit attacked or diminished. Mm -hmm. And I think also the fact that we've focused for very many years, we focused our gender equality has not really been gender equality, but it's more of, it's been more of women empowerment. So we've kind of forgotten the poor child. And this is something that we've seen even in our very own organization, the kind of people who are taking leadership opportunities. I can tell you for sure that, and based fully on statistics, that 70% are women. Wow. Bordering 80%, you'll only find one or two guys actually stepping up to take up these opportunities. So let, let's attach it with reducing inequalities. Are we then forgetting the boy child? Because that's also a very big debate. We are. We are forgetting the boy child. Now it's come to a point where we need to stop just focusing on the women. It's not um, gender equality in terms of the woman alone, but there are two genders. There's right. female and male. So now we need to create a balance because even our education system, look at the past um, KCSE results, look at what is happening with the boys. We need to now trace back, go a few steps back and figure out what can we do about the boys. However, when it comes to reduced inequalities, it's no longer just about gender. There's a factor of race. Mm nationality, people with disabilities. It's as simple as just having ramps in buildings. How are disabled friends able to access buildings and access different places? Why aren't we giving them equal opportunities? Go to the workplace. How many people with disabilities will you find in the workplace? Wow. Lesalan, I'll let you add to that on the issue of boy child, because you're the only man in this panel. Would you want to add on top of that? And as you do so, I remember reading this fantastic saying, which says, um, let's empower our girls. Um, let's empower our girls, but strengthen the boy child so they can walk hand in hand. So no, none, none of the two genders are suffering. Yeah? Lesalan, your thoughts? Uh, for the representing the boy child, I believe, yes, more can be done. Have we forgotten the boy child? Have we forgotten? Uh, is it really the society or the boy child themselves? Because the, for, as history shows, uh, or if we're empowering the women, that means before they were not being empowered, they, there was a lack. Mm. So that means as the boy child, there was privilege, there was, uh, there, you, we had the opportunities okay. basically. Mm -hmm. And now I believe uh, yes, more can be done, but also we need to be more proactive, honestly. Because, as she said, statistics showing 70, border, bordering 80, uh, are women taking up more opportunities rather than the men. So the opportunities are there for everyone, but it's just that as men we don't, we don't feel the need or we just don't want to. So I believe, yes, more can be done, but also us, we should take up more of the opportunities and be more proactive. All right, Diana, any closing comments on that specific issue before we jump into um, decent work and economic growth? Yes, just as I said, um, it's all about being proactive. No one is forgotten. It's just that you are supposed to, you don't feel like um, there is, you're lesser of a man because a lady is taking up the role. Walk hand in hand, just as you said. So I think it's all about you, um, everyone else, taking up opportunities and making it as equal as it can be. All right. Yeah. Let's tell, let's um, head over to decent work and, econo and economic growth. That is, and the whole issue of this is to make sure that we are achieving a full and productive employment and decent workplace. Right, mm -hmm. um, Jerry. Again, I'll start with you. Um, when you graduate university, and when I mean you, I mean our generation in, in general, when you graduate university, you come into this working world. What, is, what role can we play to make sure that even in our own small little way, we're making sure that decent work and economic growth is being met at the ground root level? I don't have to be at CEO position to do so. Jerry. Um, it's a thing about, like we spoke about earlier, instant gratification, mm. where people have this notion that you will get in. Yes, there's a whole ideal of being either a senior manager or a CEO, but you have to start from somewhere. There are very few people. Overnight success does not really happen. And I'll quote, um, I forget his name, however, it's the CEO of McDonald's. Um, and he talked about him being an overnight success. However, it took 50 years. 
Wow. It's not something that happens overnight, it's something that's gradual and something that takes work. However, on the other hand, if you feel like corporate is not your side, it's okay that those people, there's the entrepreneurial part of it. And that one, you can start early. You don't, again, you don't have to wait to graduate for you to start time working and starting to pace and set the pace for your life. Mm. You can start early, as little as what is your hobby? Is there a way that you can commercialize it and earn an income from it? Can be as little as 500 bob, 100 bob, but that's a step such that now you're able to grow it and move. One of the biggest debates that we tend to have on this country, on this continent rather, on matters um, decent work and economic growth, will come to the whole aspect of rights, labor rights. But it's also brain drain. So here you are, Jerry is a fantastic neurosurgeon, Diana, you're a fantastic um, engineer, the salon, um, you're a fantastic footballer, but all that talent is outside the African continent. Back here at home, we are still at the mere level. Diana, what are your thoughts on this, on the issue of brain drain, where as young people, and at the end of the day, really, it's not your fault. You're looking for employment. So if the US government or a different location is going to give you that, you have better chances of skipping ship and going to a different place. But your thoughts on the whole issue of brain drain? Um, you know, this is our country. This is our continent. Mm. You know, you skip ship, it still remains at the same position. You should think about long run. If you're going to stay in the country, stay in the continent, at the end of it all, you develop so that the engineers that come after you, the lawyers that come after you, the footballers that come after you are able to make a better living, make it better, the field that you are in. So I'd say it's all about the long run. The brain drain might be, might be there right now, but if you think of the future generations, at the end of it all, everyone will have like a productive kind of world, mm. kind of continent. Sure, yeah. let's mm, To add on to that, I believe that also uh, contributing to the brain drain is how we treat our own. Mm -hmm. We don't, uh, you, in, in our society, we don't usually, like let me give an example of footballers or sportsmen and women. Uh, for them, most you'd see someone who would uh, very willingly stop running for Kenya and run for another country. Right. And this is because of how they're being treated. And how some, we are treating them back here at home. So it's really not their fault. Yeah. Yes, because someone, some, like she said, someone is just looking for opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you feel like you're lacking back home and there are people who are willing and accepting and who will treat you the way you feel is right, you would definitely skip ship and go and, uh, and, go and you know, uh, do whatever you're doing in another place. So I believe uh, th also those leading should know how to... You should know how to treat the people below you. These are, and I'm really referring to sports because that's something I'm very passionate about. And you'd see our 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 national teams, the players are they're living in uh, quite wanting conditions. Mm. Basically, they're not. Uh, you see issues online or m media stories of how players are complaining they've not been paid their dues. So how would how would someone who has a family uh, sustain their lifestyle or how would they pay their children's school fees? So I believe that uh, for decent work and uh, just referring back to decent work and economic growth, if we're going to, if we're going to uh, increase the GDP per capita and everything, we just need to treat the people leading, let's say our sports institu institutions, they really need to look at how they treat the people who play for them, uh, work for them and such. Right. In addition um, to that, it's also um, growth opportunities. It goes beyond how we treat them, but also opportunities for growth. It gets to a point where, yes, maybe in school there are teams, sports teams. However, in primary, maybe you were in a certain sports team. You're lucky in high school, you get the same opportunity, university, the same opportunity. After that, what happens? How many people can get into the national football team? Mm. And beyond that, is there an opportunity where, because not everyone can join that specific team, but are there other teams that people can grow and eventually find a way to end up there or even greater places? The thing is training as well. And as you spoke about sports, um, not... I wouldn't call myself a sports woman, but it's the same thing, opportunities for growth. And it's not just in sports, but also in terms of business. People think that, and also, actually, let me use education, the best part. Most students, having done their undergraduate in Kenya, if you ask them where they want to do their graduate, if the opportunity is there, if it's presented, which you'll find very many students applying for scholarships or 
if you come from a privileged background, then you will be pushing your parents, mom, dad, I want to go to country X, the UK, the US. Mm -hmm. How many people will you find in our country saying, our young people in the university saying that, for my masters, I want to go to Strathmore University. I want to go to the University of Nairobi, mm -hmm. willingly. Diana? I think, just as she said, I'd go to the, medi uh, the medical part of it. Um, we saw recently the doctors have striked, like they striked for months and months. Um, just as Lesa said, it's all about how we treat the people that are there, how we treat our doctors. These are the guys that we go to when we are sick, when we are having like problems with our health, we mm. go to them. Mm. I believe it's all about how the, the institutions are treating these people. And just also on top of that, from a bird's um, viewpoint, as Africans, we also need to learn how to network amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. Let us, as Kenyans, work with Nigerians and South Africans, ETC, but there's, then there's also the issue of xenophobia and stereotypes. So I can't work with Nigerians because X, Y, Z. Yet how are you going to achieve an econ economic growth as a continent, right? Mm -hmm. um, Jerry, your thoughts? That is true, but it goes without saying that um, every, each and every country has their own it about them and there's no given point where we will all be equal nigeria has something going for them that kenyans do not mm -hmm. why not find a way and this starts with our leaders trickling down to us to be able to create a sort of exchange where we can get what they do not have and it goes back to the old days traditionally where the butter trade used to take place there are those who are pastoralists and who had livestock and there are those who are farmers. But they found a way to be able to have a blend by that exchange and be able to start at, at the end of the day, I will have some few cattle, but at the same time, I still have my plants to eat. So it's understanding first and foremost what you have as a nation, what you have um, in bounty or in plenty, per se, and then find out what you can get or what you lack because this thing for trying to invest in everything does not work. Okay, let's head over to the last SDG that we'll take a look at today. And um, Diana, you're quite passionate about it. It's the issue of peace and justice in strong institutions. We're just from an election year. Mm -hmm. Let's just tackle that peace aspect. Um, over and over again, it's been said that our generation could be the one to end um, tribalism. But again, it's within our own social circles, there are things that our own so, uh, generation says in terms of tribalism, and it really, questions that attitude of will we be the you know the, the the generation that ends tribalism making sure that there's peace your thoughts on that given um one thing i'll quote golda mm -hmm. she said that um our, right now you you're friends with someone you you don't care about the tribe that they're in you're just okay with being friends with this yes, person because yes. it's not all about tribe mm -hmm. i'd say yes we are the generation to to finish tribalism and one of the things that us isaac has like our why is peace and fulfillment of humankind's potential mm -hmm. so i think with the organizations that are here right now with the kind of steps that youth are taking because isaac itself and because i'm in the organization is that we are very passionate with having peace in itself peace all throughout, trickling down to us ourselves and the people around us. I'd say yes, with time, the, uh, the tribalism will end, the, there will be peace in the country. And within our lifetime? Be, within our lifetime, I believe so. Because mm. um, right now, I will be friends with Lessa and I would be like, I don't know which tribe he is. Before it was, you'd be friends with just the person, your tribesman. Mm. It's going to happen. Maybe it may not as be as fulfilled as we as we hope but at the end of it all generations to come it will be fulfilled all right um yeah. let's um let's on your issue uh, the uh, the issue of justice and strong institutions uh aga khan university did mm -hmm. a survey um on the issue of corruption amongst young people and sadly enough a number quite a higher percentage said given the chance that also bribe um i would vote for someone who gives me a bribe so this is also, I'm putting us, and I mean us as young people in the spotlight here. Here we are saying we want strong institutions, we want um, justice, ETC. Uh, when it comes to the streets, it's young people who are also the ones protesting the, the most. But I would vote for someone who gives me a bribe. But caught on the wrong side of the road, I would also give a bribe. Talk to me about the whole aspect of um, having strong institutions here in Kenya and how we as young people can sort of side together 
and scale, give an imbalance to those ones, to that small group of people who are saying, hey, I don't mind giving a bribe? Uh, so just to add on to what she said first before I come right. to the question, mm -hmm. uh, I believe the matter issues concerning tribes always come up during election years. I believe now that 2018 has started, no one is talking about this person is from tribe X and tribe Y. So we should also look at the bigger picture as citizens of this country and figure out why, why we would uh, belittle someone from tribe X or tribe Y just for the election period and then after you're doing business. And so I believe it's just looking at the bigger picture. Right. Are you going to vote for the person who's going to lead you to greatness or just for the sake of voting for a, tri a fellow tribes person? Okay. Uh, now onto the issue of bribery. This was, I think this boils down to morals uh, as a society. How, how we, how, how we uh, as a person, how, we, how we've grown up matters most, matters a lot, and also the, the choices that we make. So that once someone decides to bribe, it's because you're looking for the easy way out. You've probably uh, done something that's not uh, commendable, or that's not right, and you want the easy way out. And so uh, it, I think it boils down to the morals, how we are brought up, and how you see such acts. Because if you're always looking for the easy way out, time will catch up. And uh, yes, time does, someone is always caught in the act. Mm. And uh, furthermore, about, uh, it, it's always hand-me-downs. So these are people who are probably unemployed. They're, they're going to vote and they're looking for, now they're being told, ah, you shika kitu kidogo, so that you vote for me, which mm. it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense because at the end of the day, on the next day, so who's going to give you after the person is there? Are they continue, continuously going to give you cash? Or, so I believe uh, these are all things that maybe with more education, we just need to educate the population and we'll grow as a people. So, yeah. Jerry, your thoughts on that specific SDG? Um, I'll come at it from a different angle compared to what they said. And it, this is the fact that very many youth do not know their rights. So for a small offense, you're asked to pay 5,000, 10,000, yet it's something that you are not actually meant to do that. But this is because we've allowed it to happen. Why don't you take time, go find out. So for this offense, this is what the stipulated fine should be, or this is what the consequence should be. Instead of just going and then you're told something happens and because you've panicked, because it's a point of panic, honestly speaking. If you, a policeman comes up to you and tells you, and they ask for your driving license. So you're there, you're confused. But because you do not know what is meant to happen in that situation, you end up um, being gullible and also just falling short. Mm -hmm. So you end up paying that bribe, yet it's not something that you should have actually paid for. So another thing, in addition to everything that they said, which I agree with, another thing is also know your rights. As a citizen of this country, know your rights. Know where um, right from wrong comes in and know that there's a definite line. Know that if it's a fine that you're meant to pay, let it be a fine. If you're meant to go ahead, go ahead and pay that fine. However, this thing for bribery, because it will never stop. Stand up to them, and I'm not saying be rude or um, now become defiant towards um, our policemen, but know your rights and be able to stand up for yourself and actually say no, because that's the only way we'll go about it, because I believe that they also take advantage in a way. They do. Yes. All right, um, closing remarks. Mm -hmm. Diana, I'll start with you. Yes. Um, your closing remarks. My closing remarks would be, we have to take the opportunity that is presented to ourselves. Let's not postpone being the leaders. Let's not postpone being as effective as we can be. Let's start now so that tomorrow can be better. We have the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals that need to be achieved by 2030. Let's start now. It's 2018. Let's start now. By 2030, we've achieved all 17. Hmm. Yeah. And you have confidence in that? I have all confidence 17 in that. Ticked. All 17. We, when we, are, we are a lot of people in this world. Like, we'd, I'd say that, like in our university alone, we are 6,000. Hmm. We move on to our life. If we all put effort in developing all the sustainable development goals, what is to stop us on, by 2030 hmm. to have all the development goals? achieved and that's a strathmore beautiful yes Salon, your closing remarks uh to add on to that how the youth can contribute to the sdgs as isec because we're here as representatives of isec all our projects are uh, aligned, to, aligned the to the sustainable development goals how we can achieve the targets and this is not only uh on for face value uh it's
it's, uh, it's taken down to implementation. So uh, we run products such as Global Volunteer and Global Entrepreneur, where people can take up these active roles, people who are coming into the country and also sending people out, people how, how people can be more involved in achieving the targets, as she said. So yes, we can as the youth, and we just need to be more proactive and more, more open-minded. So okay. Yes. Jerry, for you? Um, mine will be slightly longer, but also to um, emphasize on what he said. Um, like I said, inspire, engage, act. So now it's come to a point, yes, we've been inspired, we've had a lot of things. Engage, we've had discussions such as this, where we come up with solutions, but now it's time to act. And as Isaac, we do have products, global volunteer, global talent, and global entrepreneur. So if, per se, you have to, you want to do community service, and maybe you want to go, it doesn't have to be far, because, again, I notion is that ISEC is very expensive, but because everyone believes that I have to go and do my exchange in, I don't know, the UK or somewhere in Spain, you can go to Tanzania, you can go to Uganda, and these are subsidized costs as compared to you planning for yourselves. Go for a six to eight week exchange in a different place, learn a new culture, learn something new, and at the same time contribute. Be part of the number that has actually come in to act and to achieve, move towards achieving the targets under each um, SDG, each of the 17 SDGs, or it can be something as little as we always have interns coming into the country, which is why we have outgoing and incoming global volunteer or global entrepreneur, you can host an intern, get to learn a thing or two about them, get to understand what they do, where they come from, and then see how you can be able to implement this here. Get to go with them, become a buddy. It's something, it's very simple, become a buddy. We have something called a buddy system, and this is literally just being a friend to the intern. Show them around, show them your country with pride, show them what you hold so dearly about your country, if at all, which hopefully you do. Get to show them new things, and also as they're going for their projects, because when they come here, they come to work at schools. Like, we, most of, like for us, we have about three projects which are focused or centered around quality education. Go with them to those schools, see what they do. As they're teaching, maybe you can show them a thing or two that will help better our education system because it's no longer just about changing the system from 844 to 2663. It also starts with the nitty gritties. What are we teaching our children? Because at this rate, um, there might be a cause of alarm. However, it's not yet the end. We can still effect change. Wow. So come on, exchange. <laughs> Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Jerry, Lesalon, and Diana, thank you guys so much for coming um, and driving this conversation this morning on the Sustainable Development Goals and what we as young people can be doing to make sure that we are achieving them come 2030. We're starting now and not starting in 2030. Yes. Thank you so much. And thank you, our viewers, for watching We Can Express right now this morning um, and for your feedback and your comments on what we've just been discussing the entire morning. I will be with you again at 11 a.m. for News Center. And let's do this again tomorrow here on We Can Express on a Sunday. Day. But for now, goodbye.